G'day and welcome to Marty's Garden. This is my small space permaculture urban garden growing on the mid north coast of New South Wales. So we're actually in a subtropical environment and at the moment we're about two weeks off the beginning of spring. We're about six weeks off the official solstice, which is I think falls around the 24th of September which is spring and this is my garden here. Down here we've got a no dig bed and what I want to do is show my camera girl Karen is when I dig in here if I start digging in look look at the worms in there this is just one spot right and we'll dig along again there'll probably be more over here I'd say bit harder to dig in look that's an earthworm the other ones you saw before were compost worms that whole this whole system is working on growing on sand and it relies on the living web, the soil living web. So as we move along here, you can see the new garden coming through. And this plant here, this is called a Brazilian cherry. It's just starting to get its nice flush. It's related to the lily pilly, syzygium. And yes, obviously it comes out of Brazil. And then as we go across here, you'll see this is my seedling section that I'm working on at the moment. And we've got a whole lot of seedlings coming up. Microgreens. Asian microgreens, beautiful, beautiful plants, nice and edible. When we look over here, these are more Asian microgreens growing for the, one of the local restaurants. And then we've got little seedlings, such as this sage and things, which is, for me, and other seedlings, like the cress, beautiful cress, nice peppy pepper flavour. Got strawberries coming up. Australian natives I grow here. This one is the uh, finger lime. And then this is a very interesting plant which I want to show you. Vietnamese mint. Now it likes a lot of water that runs along the ground and has a beautiful flavour in wraps and things like that. So let's head out. Actually, no, before we do that, I want to show you the worm farms. So we've got three worm farms happening, plastic ones. Then we're going to move out to the windrows where we've got some really amazing stuff going on. And I know a lot of you like to be updated about the worm farm windrows, but the sun's not so great, the light's not so great today, and we're filming in one shot, if we can get this all going well, Karen's awesome on the camera. So what we're doing here is we've got a cow manure worm farm bed, and this liquid is absolutely the bomb for making a really great liquid fertilizer. Over here, we've got another one, and this one is all in cocoa peat. Now, if I open it up, this is the one that I recommend that beginners start with, and is in the course, starting a worm farm, a beginner's guide. If you look under there, look at all those worms. Just going absolutely nuts. If you want to learn how to farm worms like that, you can see there's castings in there, all ready to harvest. Then you need to get on the course, starting a worm farm, a beginner's guide. We've got another one here, can of worms, all doing really well. Starting to get in there, and look, all these castings pretty much ready to go. They're down deep at the moment in that farm, down in the second layer where the other food is. And then we've got compost for the seedlings that I'm making at the moment, for shooting the, the course that I've been filming, the next one. And this has a mixture of worm cast in there as well, finished compost and worm cast. So we'll head around to the outdoor windows now and I'll show you what's going on out there. So let's go with the camera car and start moving up here through the garden, coming across all edibles that I can pick from each every day. Look at this chart here. I want you to see when you see how healthy soil is, you're feeding the soil and not the plants, the colour you can get in certain plants. Like look at this. That is just beautiful. Red vein sorrel, that's the one you see as a microgreen all the time on the TV. The worms here, the hungry bin worms. Let's have a look inside. We'll keep moving you through all the worm situations here. There we go, look at that. Just absolutely loving it in there. Again, if you want to learn worm farming from me, you can head over to martysgarden.com.au and I'll help you out over there. So we'll keep going this way. And here we have the windrows. And we've got the sun coming this way, so Karen's filming just right. As she steps back a bit, we can get right down here 
into this angle here. So what am I doing here? Well, down here is the new stuff that I'm starting and it's being blended as we speak. You can see it's going in and moving in through into this material. And it's starting to get quite warm now and uh, starting to really break down and get a little bit, little bit humusy. So that's sort of the material. Once that cools down, the worms will start moving into it a bit more. So as we move up, we're getting older material coming up. This has come through the sifter from the compost sifter. And look, there's an egg, look. Cocoon egg right there. There's cocoon, cocoons all the way through this material. And as we come through, you can see I've covered this over to keep it cooler. We'll regulate the temperature so much, um, just to keep it regulated and not dry out so quick and keep the worms at the surface. And so look, we come here again, you can see, look, there's another cocoon. They're literally all through this material and I'm just getting countless numbers of worms now. Um, when I look in there, there's, there's just more cocoons. Like there's a worm just there and I just dropped the, there's a little cocoon. Look, one, two, three. Three cocoons just in that handful there. One, two, three. So lots coming through in this spring harvest. Now I'm harvesting out of the site. There's a magpie. He's come to get a worm. Our mate, Mr. Maggie. You got one? Off he goes. Go on, off you go. He can have a few. We don't mind because he comes and does other good jobs around the garden and protects it as people ride past on their push bikes. He will dive bomb them for us. <laughs> you ever seen him do that, Car? No. You haven't seen him do that yet? So what I'm doing is kind of comes around the side, around this way here, just directing, trying to get this all in one shot if we can. If you can see up the side up here, I've been pulling it away. What I want to do is move the worms as I pull it away back into that wall, so then I can put it through this sifting system, which um, we'll put some through now. And so, just give you a look at what's going on here. And so there's lots of people are buying this, product at the moment. There's lots of worms and lots of cocoons in it. So if they're gardening really well and putting compost down and putting the, I'll just throw that into there, little baby worms. So yeah, if they're composting really well and then putting this into their garden and mulching, cover mulching, these little cocoons will come up and they'll get populations uh, in their gardens and that will fertilize their gardens just like you saw before earlier when I pulled away the soil in the top of the mulch. So another thing I want to show you is you can see like the castings on the edge here. When you get castings, it creates like a, uh, a flat film, like clay-like surface. And you can see that there's lots of worm castings in that material. So what I'm finding is the worms are actually going down much deeper than I thought. And so I want to show you something and see if they're here. Um, Pull away the wall there. Look, Karen, can you film onto there? You can see, look how deep down they are. Look, there's a cocoon there and another cocoon there. They're everywhere, the cocoons through this wall here. And so as we pull this away, look, Karen, Karen come in with a shot here. You can see the worms. Look, around here, darling. They can't get in there, Dad. That's all right. You can see them, they're down deep. Look in this material, and hopefully we're getting that shot. Okay, I had to grab the car and camera off car because I was having trouble getting into that angle. But I just wanted to show you that they're always not always at the surface. If there's material for them to eat and it's aerated, they're gonna go through this material and really, you know, really chew through it and make much better compost. And so this is just, to me, that's just brilliant stuff. Like I know this, Filming is a bit dodgy, but we're doing the very best that we can. So I'm going to hand the camera back to Karen now. And this is almost like a live shot. And you can see the material. It's just absolutely just brilliant. Full of worms and cocoons. I'll throw that back. I want them to move back and then move down into that new material. So I'm encouraging them. So if Karen walks around the trommel here and comes over to something like this down the end. And she should be able to get into the shade over here and be able to film back this way. So you go walk up that way, Karen. 
up there and film back this way because uh -huh. the sun will be, the light will be good. Just watch what you're doing with the camera there. Good on you, Dale. Now I'm going to show you something. This is um, material right down here, the sawdust. And they'll go down deep looking for that sawdust there. Um, it, it's really interesting to see. And so the air hasn't got to this sawdust, so it hasn't started breaking down. So I've, had, I've got to go through and dig through it, put it back into the pile. And they're going down deep and finding that top layer there and then eating from it, you can see. So there's like more cocoons. That material's still breaking down. There's another cocoon there, see? It's just, we've just got endless amounts. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually get grab a thing here. We're gonna have a look at what's here. So here we go, look. That's from the coffee coffee suppliers. Again, I'm seeing more cocoons. So the people that are buying the compost off me at the moment are getting great deal, right? This is like a bargain. I'm just like seeing cocoons everywhere through this material. Um, we could probably harvest cocoons and just get lots of baby worms at the moment, but we don't have time for that. So this material, this pile is going to end up down the other end because I want to transfer all those worms down to that end of that pile down there and get them start to populate that new zone. All right, so we're going to finish up now. And I just want to thank you for watching the whole video and having the patience and coming through with us. I'm hoping that you learned a bit and picked up a few tips and tricks along the way. You don't have to do it as big as this. You can break it down to scale. You can have a small compost system. Once you get the composting worms into your system, you can start them off in a small plastic farm like I do to control your populations until you get lots and lots and lots of worms. Because once you get used to farming them, they just keep populating as you've seen with all the cocoons. I'm just going to have millions of worms coming into this spring. So a small plastic farm and then you can use a tumbler and maybe a small outdoor area. Keep a square meter, so a cubic foot, and you can have lots and lots of compost worms creating an artisan compost just like me and grow organically. If you've got any questions, leave them down below. I look forward to answering them for you. Keep them related to this topic. If you've got any questions on small space worm farming, uh, you can get me over at my course at uh, Starting a Worm Farm, a beginner's guide at Marty's Garden. And I'm happy to help people over there because I'm starting to coach quite a lot of people in that new community. All right, have a great day. Happy gardening. And we'll see you at the next video real soon. Bye for now.